I'm Rachel Plant and I talk about attachment parenting and what I wish I'd known but nobody told me. And today I'm going to talk about attachment parenting a toddler and how it's different from attachment parenting a baby. So even though attachment parenting isn't mainstream and um, most people don't parent in that way, Friends and family, they're, they're probably going to be okay once they get their heads around it. They're probably going to be okay with you, you know, breastfeeding um, your baby, maybe sleeping with the baby in the bed. They're not, they're not that happy about it, but, you know, they can go along with it. But when it comes to, you know, your baby's two or three and then you're still breastfeeding them and they're still sleeping in your bed and you're still carrying them in a sling, this is when the objections um, and concerns can come from friends and family and um, I always think of the scene in the comedy sketch show Little Britain I don't know if you've seen it um, it is uh, a sketch about a grown man who's still breastfeeding and uh, and he calls it bitty so it's quite funny go and check it out but and th I think this is the image that people have in their minds you know they're uncomfortable people are uncomfortable with um breastfeeding older children because it's not normal you know it's not the norm in our society it's not what most people are doing and you know it's it can be um the butt of um a lot of jokes and then you know i think their fear is that you're your child is going to be 18 and still sleeping in your bed and breastfeeding. But you know the reality is that I don't know of any 18-year-olds um, that are doing that. Quite the opposite, in fact. You know, they uh, they usually don't want anything to do with you by that age. But, um, you know, th this, is, this, is, um, this is the thing. So, first of all, you know, first of all, what you need to bear in mind is that... Um, how you parent, how you choose to parent your child is absolutely nobody else's business but yours and your partner. If you have one, I didn't, you know, I've always been a single parent, so I haven't had that consideration. But, you know, your parents, your sister, your brother, your friends, your auntie, they have absolutely no say. You know, they have no right to even comment. Um, and so I think you need to be really clear in your boundaries around this. And um, and I know right from the start that I, I was clear in those boundaries. I was really um, sure about how I wanted to parent my baby. And, you know, no matter what anybody else thought about it, um, it wasn't open for negotiation. It was my decision. That was how I was going to parent. And, and I wanted people around me to respect that. And, you know, largely they have. You know, they have, and um, and I think it's because of that energy, that vibe that I was putting out, you know, that it that it's, you know, it's it's not up for discussion. This is how it, I'm doing it. These are the reasons that I'm doing it. This is why it's beneficial for my baby and my toddler, and that's, that's it. That's how we're going to do it. So, um, so how is it? How is it to attachment parent a toddler? Well, you know, the best advice that I could give you is don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Attachment parenting, okay, although it was created by a doctor, Dr. Sears, and, uh, you know, there's there's the, the seven Bs or the five Bs or whatever, you know, this kind of um, guidelines. They're, they're not rules, you know. It's, it's a method, but, it, you know, it's not actually... It's not actually something that you have to follow rigidly. And try and get away from this whole idea of it being a technique. It is how we're meant to parent. It's absolutely how we're meant to parent and how our ancestors parented. It is just the natural way, the, the way to be with your baby, be in connection with your baby, and the way that people parented for thousands and thousands of years. The way that we parent in the West, in the in the mainstream, is has only come about within the last hundred years, you know. And um, the whole the whole birth and pregnancy, and you know how you need to be with your baby after 
you've given birth to them it's all become medicalized in a way that it doesn't need to be and in a way that it never was before you know you would have you know when 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 we lived in tribes when we lived multi-generationally there would be that knowledge and wisdom within the family within the extended family and the community around you and you know you wouldn't be you wouldn't be parenting in isolation you would you wouldn't be looking on google for the answers it would just be it would be around you you know it would just be it would be part of the natural framework of how people live their lives in harmony with the rhythms of the earth and the rhythms and the cycles of their body and they would just be intuitively instinctively listening to all of that and um listening to that within their body and the, the uh, their baby and and their own body and you know it was just um a natural symbiotic relationship um that wasn't that wasn't over overly thought about it's just how they lived okay so that it always helps me to think about it in those kinds of terms you know how, how did our ancestors do it um, how are we meant to how are we meant to do this stuff um, and for me when I get centered when I get grounded when I feel into my body and um, tap into I can tap into that ancient wisdom that is within all of us um, you know I can feel it through flowing through me and so this is the place this is the place that we need to parent parent from without getting too woo woo you know this is this is the essential truth that when we're parenting from this authentic connected place the, from this energetic place we know how to do it we know how to connect with our babies we know how to tune into exactly what they need and it's straightforward it's easy we don't need to overthink it now we're not meant to um we're not meant to live in the way that we do in nuclear families and parenting attachment parenting in a nuclear family where we are isolated and we don't have extended family and we don't have friends and neighbors who are all doing it in the same way as us is difficult it is difficult so it's really really essential to find that network find those like-minded people those people that get it you know that aren't gonna be like she's still sleeping in your bed at three years old then they, they're doing it as well and they know they know you know you, you're coming from the same place you're on the same page that is essential um, to have that support to have that network and you know and if you can um, if you can do child swaps, child care swaps, if you can be um, giving each other actual practical physical support, then you know that makes life so much easier. I found that, I, you know, on my parenting journey, I found that I had to really go into a headspace, into a place of um, thinking that, you know, I, I am going to do it this way because it's the natural way it's what feels natural to me but um it is going to be difficult and I am going to have to let go of the idea of having a social life of going out of um having a career all of those things I put on hold for several years um and I was happy to do it I was happy to do it I was an older mom I was 41 when I had my daughter who's eight now um but yeah, it was a different mindset um, that I was that I was willing to kind. I was willing to be there for my daughter. Um, I was willing to um, sacrifice. But wouldn't it be a wonderful world if we didn't have to do that, and if we had, you know, a community around us um, who, you know, where we could share share the the, the childcare, and we could all um be on the same page so what i'm saying is um essentially what i'm saying is that listen to yourself be your own baby guru 
tune into what feels what what feels like the truth for you when you're dealing with your baby so it's you know it is really getting into a centered and grounding space and parenting from that place um because the answers are within the answers are all within we don't need baby experts we don't need what our health visitors um have to say on the subject we don't need our gp obviously if your baby is um if your baby is ill and you are concerned you know you know that um there's something wrong and so you can you can use those services if you choose to but don't but don't make those your gurus don't make them the experts you are the expert you're the expert on your baby and your toddler and your child um which might sound controversial but that's okay i'm all right with that um it's taken me a long time to get to that point where i i completely i completely trust that i know how to parent my baby and how to have that relationship with my older child as she is now um it's been a journey but it's um yeah that's the that's the best piece of advice i can give you so if you would like to um keep in touch with me and um find out when i post new videos or new content then you can there is a link below to join my mailing list and there is also a link to a free pdf that i have written which is um attachment parenting what i wish i had known but nobody told me um so that's it from me for now and i'll see you soon